Triple E EDC back again with another night video. So these are uh, some Victorinox products here, and this night this video is actually not about Victorinox products. Um, but uh, we've got the Sw the Swiss Army knife um, Cadet here. We've got the Pioneer X, and we've got the Swiss Tool Spirit X uh, here. And this is the new version with the clip and the one hand opening. Um, there will be a review coming on that, uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, but in any event, uh, this actually is a video about a different knife, the American Service Knife. Um, so this is the, the model's called the Jefferson on this, and uh, there's a couple different models on this. Uh, there's actually a drop on this. Now this is a, you know, a knife a lot of people have been after, so I, I do believe it will sell out. Um, but the drop is happening, uh, if you're watching this on June 24th, 2022, uh, the drop is happening uh, a, I believe at 10 a.m. Central Time, Central Standard Time um, at DLT. I have a, an affiliate link below. It definitely helps the channel if you uh, purchase through that link. Um, and anytime you go to purchase a knife, it definitely helps the channel to purchase through that link as well. Um, so check, definitely check that out. Uh, also, my Patreon is linked below as well. Um, but in any event, uh, the American Service Knife here, the Jefferson. Um, so this brand is actually uh, done by Medford, 100% made in the USA. Um, and uh, it has a lot of cool features and some features that I, I, I don't love quite as much. Um, but it is a really interesting knife into the, or entry into the um, slip joint category. And we're going to take a look at this compared to some other knives uh, that are in the category and we're going to discuss. Um, <clears throat> so first of all, uh, you know, the box is the box. It's not, uh, it's not overly impressive or anything. Um, you know, it's not as nice as like a Benchmade box, for example, which is also, um, you know, a USA product. Uh, but the Spyderco boxes, which, you know, can be from one of several places, um, those boxes are probably similar in quality to this, right? So that, that's the level of quality on the box you're looking for. However, uh, I will note that the Victorinox boxes are basically on par with Cold Steel for the most part. Uh, so you're going to get basically a, a very small box, um, you know, proportional to the actual knife itself. Um, or I shouldn't say proportional, really like almost the size of the knife itself. Um, and, uh, and it's going to be a thin cardboard box. So, um, you know, the, uh, there's definitely a, a little bit of a step up from, you know, a sack box onto, uh, onto this, but this is not going to blow, you know, other boxes out of the way. Like, uh, you know, concept knives comes in and Kaiser's come in, in really nice boxes, poker, um, depending on the, uh, um, it, you know, comes in decent boxes, Be Benchmade, if you're talking about a USA product, um, comes in nice boxes as well as ProTech. Um, and you can get nice ProTech knives in this price range as well. Um, so, and Benchmades as well. So, you know, just be aware of that uh, as far as the boxing. Not that the boxes are the end all be all. Um, and I'm going to stop talking about boxes now because we're three minutes in. Um, so, uh, next thing, um, you know, I have opened this uh, before. But, you know, just to take a quick look. Uh, so this isn't necessarily my the first time I'm seeing the knife, but it is uh, one of the um, you know sort of first times I'm pulling it out of the box. Um, but it is nice to see that they include something like a patch. It's a really really nice touch to include a patch, uh, especially in this price range. You don't see a lot of th a lot of anything uh, in this price range. Um, you know, obviously this is just foam. Uh, but, you know, in including patches, and not only do you get a patch, but you get a patch and a sticker, um, and, uh, you know, they, they give you this, you know, nice sort of literature here. Um, there's Greg, and uh, you can see the proudly made in the United States of America, warranty, care, and maintenance. Um, so if you guys sort of want to see this, I guess I'll float it across the screen, and you can see it if you want to pause it. Okay, and there's a little uh, code there, so. Okay, so um, here you go. All right, so that is the unboxing. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at this. Um, take a look at the knife itself. All right, so this is the Jefferson. So um, you have the, uh, the shield there. I really like the shield, by the way. Um, you know, it's uh, uh, it's very it's very American. You know, so you you got the um, you know the gun there. You've got the uh, um, I, I guess the hammer for the uh, for the anvil. Um, I guess that's what that is. Uh, you've got the nice shield. Um, 
You have the uh, six shooter pivot, sort of reminiscent of Medford's other knives, um, but it has sort of that hole in the center, which I think um, gives it a different aesthetic. Uh, you definitely have the um, made in USA there with the, um, with the flag and on the other side as well. So you got the shield and the flag on both sides made in the USA. So the sides are the same. Um, and uh, all right, so let's go ahead and talk about the knife itself. So there's, there's some really, really nice things about this knife. And um, the, the, the concept is that it's gonna be, or that it is a modular design. And what that means is um, they give you sort of a base model here. Uh, and they've got about four different base models. Um, they're, not all of them are out yet. I think maybe this one, and I'm not sure if there's a second one. Uh, that was released directly by Medford, but they, this one's just hitting the dealers now, uh, the Jefferson. So um, the, they, they basically, you have the base knife and then you can um, disassemble this and uh, substitute in. They have, you know, spacers you can buy and uh, you can buy separately springs. So if you wanted to add an extra layer to this, you could actually add an extra layer to this um, with additional tools. They have separate tools for sale. Um, and I'll go through some of the tools that they have uh, you know, for sale on this. Um, I will say though that some of the availability of those tools uh, and the other models is not quite there yet. Um, I think this is, uh, because this is so new, you're gonna see a product start to fill the shelves, um, but it's not there yet. So even though it's a modular design, you won't be able to do all the interchanging of parts uh, right now. You're gonna have to wait for that. All right, so um, let's go ahead and talk about what comes on the Jefferson. So let me go ahead and pull the tools out here. Um, All right, so a um, couple things, right? So we have the, we have a, um, a chisel tool here. We have a bottle opener and screwdriver, and then we have a draw point blade. Um, now there are a couple different blades that come with this, uh, or, or come on this. This is uh, the draw point. They also have a Tonto, and they have a uh, sax. Um, the sax is uh, a little sheep's footy, but also like a worn cliff as well. Um, and then they have a, a, a like a, a worn cliff with a reverse tanto uh, on the worn cliff. So that's basically what they have as far as blade shapes. You can actually um, order just the blades. You can, and one of the beautiful beautiful things of this is you can order literally any part. So you can order new pivots. You can order new um, new tools. You can order new liners. You can order new. Um, new scales, they have all different colors of scales. Um, and again, the availability might not be there yet, but, but um, that's what their uh, plan is essentially. So you can order new scales, you can order new tools, you can order new springs, so you can add additional layers, um, you know, as you add the additional, oh, you, can add, you can order spacers. Um, so all that stuff is taken care of. It's very modular, which is something that's, that's really, really nice. So, um, you know, for example, right, you have the cadet here, and you have a couple springs, and then you have the Pioneer X, which has, uh, you know, um, several more layers, right? So uh, you sort of have that option is you can go ahead and keep this. You can just do the single knife if you want. You can take it down to the single knife. So now it's really skinny. Or you can keep, uh, keep it like this as it comes, or you can add a third layer or a fourth. You know, you can turn it basically into a Swiss champ at some point, right? Um, Wait, is, this a Swiss, is a Swiss champ the, the really huge one? I think that's the huge one. Um, you, you guys know what I'm talking about. It has like a million tools in it. It's like, you know, this thick. <laughs> um, in any event, uh, so as far as the grind on this, um, well, and by the way, one of the things to note is uh, it says on their website that everything is going to be CPM tool steel. Um, you know, so what that means is all the tools and the knives are going to be made from the same steel, which I think is excellent. Um, you know, that's, when you're looking at the price on this, and, and again, we'll get to the price in, in, in a bit, but um, when you're looking at the price on this, you, you know, you have to remember that you're talking about um, tool steel, uh, uh, CPM tool steel, so, so a super steel essentially, for not just the knife, but for other implements as well, uh, which I think is really cool. All right, so um, in the, in the uh, case of this, this is S45VN, that's the steel. Um, so an excellent, excellent steel. Obviously, Chris Reeve uses the steel. Spyderco uses the steel. Um, you know, it's uh, it's just an excellent, excellent steel. Um, so 
As you can see, you have a high polish on this, uh, on the blade. The blade is hollow ground um, and fairly thin and slicey. Um, so, you know, it, it's, uh, uh, it, it's very, very, it's a very, very usable blade. So it's a little bit thick, like it's, it's much thicker than, let me go ahead and put these away, right? The, let's talk about the blade itself. So let's compare this to, and we'll do some size comparisons in a bit, guys. Um, but this is the Pioneer X blade, right? Um, so as you can see, you're getting a little bit more blade length. This is under three inches, by the way, according to um, Medford Sight. I'm not going to measure it here on camera, but according to Medford Sight, the blade itself is under three inches, and the cutting edge is uh, like two point between 2.6 and 2.7. Um, so anyway, you've got uh, you've got a little bit longer of a cutting edge, a little bit longer of blade uh, here on the on the Medford. You have a flat grind here on the um, on the sack, uh, whereas you have a hollow grind here. And as far as the thickness, so you can see it's much thicker uh, on the um, ask knife. Now, one of the beautiful things about the hollow grind is the thinness behind the edge. It still gets. You know, and I'm not going to, again, I don't do measurements on this channel, but um, to the naked eye, it looks significantly similar to, uh, or substantially similar um, on the cutting edge as far as the, uh, the edge thickness. So um, it's probably a little, th a little bit thicker than the, uh, than the sack behind the edge, um, but it is much more robust and substantial overall. Uh, and like when you're holding, when you're holding a sack, like, you know it's gonna stand up to like cutting cardboard and you know it's gonna stand up to, to cutting, um, you know, a, a lot of different materials. Um, but, you know, it, it doesn't lend like ultimate confidence, right? Um, I feel like this get, lends you just significantly more confidence, uh, which I think is pretty cool. Um, also, it, I really like the idea of a, um, of a hollow grind, uh, you know, rather than a flat grind on, um, as an alternative on a, on a knife here. So uh, really, really like that. As far as the pull on this, um, it's kind of interesting. Um, the the pull is, it's, it's not as much as the GEC, but it's more than like the Benchmade proper, for example, right? Um, so, and you're gonna get a full half stop, right? So you have a full half stop and you have the half stop also with the tools. Um, so, but it has, you know, it has a nice haptic feedback, or, you know, walk and talk or whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, it's pretty easy to get in and out. I will say I do prefer, um, you know, the, by the way, there's no half stop on, uh, on the um, Swiss Army. So I do prefer the, uh, the ease of access on the blade here. Um, it is easier, the nail nick is a little bit deeper. Uh, on this one, I think, then on the, um, uh, where's the blade? So, there we go. Uh, the nail nick is a little bit deeper on the um, ask knife, or at least it feels deeper. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let's see if we can. So you can see the nail neck here. It's wider on the sack but it feels deeper on the Medford, uh, on the Ask Knife. So uh, that's kind of an interesting, um, interesting, com you know, comparison there. Um, and again, one of the biggest advantages of this, uh, or one of the biggest reasons to get the Ask Knife is the, um, is the blade steel. So, you know, you, you guys who have owned sacks know you have to sharpen them pretty often. Um, they do sharpen up easy. There's not, not really an issue sharpening these. These, are, these sharpen up pretty easy. Um, but you do have to sharpen them uh, because they dull, you know, fairly quickly. Um, and, uh, um, and, and so it's just sort of a, a tool that you're going to, you know, be... Um, you're going to maintain the edge, but you're going to have to keep doing it. So you, you probably be a little less careful. This one, you know, you're, you're spending a little bit more money, but you're also getting a nicer steel. You're probably going to have to use diamond stones um, to sharpen it. Uh, because of the super steel, which means that you're probably also going to be a little more careful. So usually, I mean, just people who, who sharpen knives know um, you're you're a little more careful on getting a really nice edge on on the you know a uh, on a nice steel with diamond stones than you are on um, on a stainless steel. At least at least I am. 
um, you know, I, I tend to, to beat these around, um, you know, whereas this one I'd probably, you know, go ahead and sharpen um, on a wicked edge, right? I'd probably use a work sharp for this. Um, or I do use a work sharp for this. In any event, uh, that, that is the, um, uh, that's the, the knife blade. Uh, next thing is we're going to look at the, um, well, let's, let's do the, so the can opener here. Um, so this is a can opener or bottle, op I'm sorry, bottle cap lifter, um, not a can opener, bottle cap lifter. So th this is, uh, you know, going to be pretty self-explanatory. You don't really need a, um, uh, you know, a, a nice steel for a, a bottle cap lifter. Um, and when it comes to a screwdriver, uh, you know, for a Phillips, it might make sense to do, a, a, you know, a, a hardened steel. Um, you know, for the flathead, I don't know. I mean, you could use the, 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 this. It's not substantially wide, so you're not going to get, like, a Leatherman um, where you... Let me see if I have something handy. Um, where's my wave? All right, so here... Um, All right, so the Wave doesn't even have the uh, uh, the most robust screwdriver out of all the Leathermans, but if you're going to use some, you know, a uh, um, a screwdriver, so a lot of people use this as a, as a pry bar, uh, and the reason they use it as a pry bar is because um, you know uh, you're not going to. There's really no other pry bar on here, and you know there is a. Um, you know, a, a bit exchanger on here with a flathead, so there's not a whole lot of reason to use, you know, the uh, flathead version of this. But as you can see, the, um, the flathead's larger on this, and so it'll be a little bit more substantial, um, it, although this one, you know, this one has a lot more thickness um, and tends to thin out towards the end. So uh, just a little bit of, um, you know, comparison on that. Um, I'll also compare the bottle cap lifter on this one. Um, what's the can opener? Is it? There we go. So here's the cap lifter on this one, right? And so if you're looking for a wider edge, you're going to get a, a wider edge on this one. Um, if you are looking for, uh, you know, the, the bottle cap lifter, is gonna, they're going to operate about the same. Most beers are you know, or other beverages are pretty easy to open. Here is your um, thickness comparison, right, uh, on these. And so that, that's really your comparison on this. Um, although, you know, you're going to get uh, nicer steel on this. Um, so you, it'll probably take more lateral force. Uh, whether ultimately the pivot is going to be able to take significant um, uh, lateral force, I'm not exactly sure because, uh, and, you know, we'll, well, we'll get to... Um, why the pivot, uh, I'm concerned about it a little bit um, in, a, in a few minutes. So that's that's that. Um, the last thing is gonna be the chisel. Okay, so the chisel here, this is a chisel. Um, it is a uh, suggested edge, which means it's not like super sharpened or anything. Um, they It is sharpenable, it's meant to be that way. So you can go ahead and sharpen it for those people who want it sharpened. You can go ahead and sharpen it, um, but it, it is a suggested edge to start. Um, so you're not going to get, you know, it's not going to cut you, um, you know, on the start. But it is thin enough on the on the the edge over here um, that you can use it for some chisel, you know, uh, chisel work. You just wouldn't use it for necessarily woodworking, right? Um, so this is going to be more of, uh, and I wouldn't necessarily use this edge because because of the fact that it has a bevel um, as your pry bar. I would I would prefer to use an actual pry bar, um, not a knife, but if you're gonna use something to pry on this knife, um, and again, we'll talk about the pivot on this, um, this would probably be your best bet, but again, I don't necessarily suggest it. Um, and and we'll, we'll talk about that. This also has a, a quarter inch, um, you know, wrench, uh, and then this is a nail puller, right? So you're gonna, you're gonna put some torque on the pivot, um, and it is intended, I guess, to uh, be able to use it. So, you know, there, there could be some amount of force that you're able to put on the pivot. I just have some concerns on it. Um, and so we'll talk about what those concerns are right now. Um, so the concerns I have on the pivot are, 
that um, this is, so there's good news and bad news on this. Like I said, the, the blades and the tools themselves are uh, CPM tool steel, right? Or CPM steels, I should say. Um, so the liners and the pivots are titanium. Okay, so they're a little bit softer than, than the steels. Uh, and so that, that's essentially my, uh, my concern. Now, that's good and that's bad because the, um, you know, titanium has good, um, good tensile strength, even though it's, it's stronger. Uh, but, um, you know, it, it uh, um, I, I do have, because of how thin some, like the liners are, and I'm not exactly how sure how thin, the, I haven't disassembled this, um, how thin the actual pivots themselves are because I think they're hollow. I'm not exactly sure whether they, they could take it. However, the good news is this thing is extremely light because of the titanium liners, because of the, um, the scales, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, and uh, so for how much steel is on here, this thing is extremely light. I think it's like, I think I saw online, it's like 2.4 uh, 2 or 2.6 ounces. I can't remember which. Um, but basically it's not much more than a Benchmade bug out, um, which, you know, it, I think it actually weighs about the same as a Hogue Deca. And I'll give you a sneak preview of uh, this Hogue Deca, which will, which will be reviewed. But, um, the, uh, so this, this is the Hogue Deca with carbon fiber scales, right? So you're going to get, um, it, it's not much more, it's, it's, it's it, like, this is around, I think like two point, well, the G10 version is like 2.3 ounces or something. Um, and, uh, and this is basically the same. It's a, it's like slightly more, right? Which is, um, which is crazy because a lot of slip joints are pretty heavy. Um, the, the ALOX versions, now I understand that the ALOX versions are heavier, um, uh, you know, in the, uh, in the Swiss Army knives, um, than the regular versions. And I, I like the ALOX versions. Um, so that's what I have. That's what I have. And that's what I carry, um, in my, uh, in my Pioneer, um, and my Cadet. Um, but the, um, uh, but the, the scales here are, uh, are light and the titanium liners are light. Whereas here, right, you're looking at all steel. So these are steel liners um, and, uh, and, th and then these are aluminum scales, right? And then you have a bunch of steel inside. So th it ends up being quite heavy. This is really light. Um, now, one of the reasons it's light is because of the, um, is because of the scales. And the scales, uh, the scales are a mixed bag for me because I actually kind of like the color. Um, you know, I didn't love it at first, uh, but I kind of like it now. Uh, it's, the camera doesn't really pick up the color that well. It's like an orangish yellow. Um, it looks very yellow on the camera to me, but um, it's, a, it's, very, it's a little bit orangish, uh, orangish yellow. So I, I really do like the color now. Um, and there are other colors, there's like red, there's like blue, there's, there's a gray one coming out. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's a couple colors and they, they're coming out with more. I think I saw that they're coming out with white. Um, and, uh, and so that's really cool. Um, now these, these, the, the, the scales are injection molded. Uh, so that is the drawback, right? So the, I would have preferred to see, um, some other materials. Uh, now I think a lot of people would prefer to see G10. Uh, I'm not a big G10 person. Um, I understand why they did injection molded. Their competition sack on their regular scales does injection molded, um, you know, but uh, they basically do plastic. But the, um, I would have liked to see, not necessarily like an ALOX version of this, but um, ALOX is aluminum oxide, by the way, um, you know, but the, uh, what I would have liked to see is, is maybe something like a micarta, right? Um, like Rip, Rip's Garage Tech makes some really, really nice micarta scales for the, for the Swiss Army knives. It would have been really cool to see like a micarta on this. It would be really light. It would be, um, you know, fairly durable. I guess, you know, the injection molded is a little bit more durable probably than micarta. Um, but I think it would have added, you know, sort of an extra <clears throat> rugged, you know, American feel to it to have some micarta scales on here. Uh, so I think that is a little bit of a miss for me. Um, I do know that, uh, you know, they want to advertise this as being an heirloom, uh, knife. So to that end, if you're going to have an heirloom knife, maybe, um, you know, G10 would have been the choice. 
Um, I also would have liked, you know, at this price range, and I don't know that, you know, it, it could be done, like on G10, you might have to do something a little bit different, uh, but on, on the injection molded, like some micro texturing or something like, you know, uh, working in some sort of, you know, I guess pattern or something to give it some texture would have been good. These scales are actually pretty slick and slippery. Um, it's not that, you know, really any different from the plastic scales you get on, on a Swiss Army knife as far as, you know, being slick and slippery, but um, I, I've never liked the, uh, you know, sort of slick, slickness of the scales on the sack. All right, the last thing we'll talk about is the, uh, is the tool set that's available for purchase. Um, now, again, the tool set is not going to be available uh, just yet because they don't have enough stock. Uh, I don't think they've even ma started making some of the tools and the blades. We talked about the blades uh, that they have available, the blade shapes. Um, the tools that they're going to have available, they're going to have a range finder. Um, they're going to have a um, what they call a bolt scraper. I guess it's probably a, a carbon scraper. Um, they're going to, um, like an AR style carbon scraper. Um, they're going to have a, um, they're going to have an awl. Now the awl looks more like a leather awl than a wood awl. Um, I would have preferred to see something more like a wood awl. Um, going back to the Pioneer X, um, the Pioneer X actually has a pretty decent awl. Um, you can see it here. Uh, it comes to a nice point. There is no um, hole for sewing because it's, uh, I don't think it's necessarily made for leather, um, but it does bore into, and it sort of has like an edge all along here. Uh, it does bore into wood fairly well. Uh, and, uh, you know, I really like the, um, the awl on the Swiss Army knife here on the Pioneer. So um, I would have liked to see that on the awl. Uh, on the Medford, but uh, I, I guess they went more for leather all and it, it the end of the leather all is basically like a, it You know if you if you've ever seen those alls that look more like the edge is, is a small flathead screwdriver um, You know even smaller than this one. That's kind of what it looks like um, and uh, Let me think I think there's one other tool that they that they have um, that they were going to advertise on here, uh, but th those are the one main ones that I think I was interested in. Um, you know, not so much the um, not so much the rangefinder. I, I kind of don't understand um, a rangefinder in a CPM steel, but uh, that's another story. Um, in any event, the uh, um, excuse me. So the. That's the knife. All right. So as far as pricing, I think the pricing on this is around two fifty, um, and uh, you know that is for what you're getting. I think it, I think it. When I first saw this, I thought it's a little much, and then when I first got it in hand, I also thought, yeah, this isn't a two hundred fifty dollar knife. As I've you know sort of had it, and again, this wasn't necessarily an unboxing. Um, I, I might title the video that because I pulled it out of a box, but. Um, you know, the, uh, uh, as I've, you know, sort of used this and, um, cause I've had this for, uh, probably about a month now. Um, cause I, I ordered straight off of, uh, Medford's website on the pre-order. Um, there was no telling when the, when the retailers were going to get them in. Uh, the, like I, w w once I got it in hand, you know, like I said, I was a little bit like, eh, it's, I don't know if it's a $250 knife. Um, and then I started using it and it really, it, it holds up really well. It's, it really is like a nice quality uh, slip joint. It, it really is. Um, it's very, very high quality in general. I had to get over the, uh, um, the injection molded handles because it's just not my, my taste. I like a good metal handle. I like, you know, my car to handle. Um, I just have to get over it, right? Uh, but um, the, the, the tools themselves are pretty handy. Um, the knife is excellent. Um, a really, really good knife. Uh, I have really enjoyed the knife uh, on this. I, I've used the knife more than anything. Um, I haven't really used the cap lifter too much because I haven't been drinking recently. I've been on some pain medication for, for my stuff. Um, but uh, and I don't use, I don't tend to use, I tend to carry a Leatherman sometimes, so I don't tend to use the, um, uh, the flathead, but the chisel, right? The chisel is something that I've used as a scraper a number of times. Um, you know, I haven't sharpened the edge yet, um, but I do plan to, 
uh, and you know it, it's something that doesn't come on the Leatherman. So um, you know I, most of the Leathermans. I think there might be one Leatherman model with a chisel. I can't recall quite off the top of my head. Uh, if, you, if you guys know, go ahead and comment below. Um, but the um, the chisel is something that you don't find in a lot of Leathermans. You do find it on the Swiss Tool Spirit X. Um, you know, let me see if I can find uh, the chisel on here. By the way, the Swiss Tool Spirit X also has a, uh, a decent awl here. Um, still getting used to the Swiss Tool. I haven't carried it that much. Um, yeah, so so the, the, they have the... Uh, this, this tool is on the Swiss Tool Spirit X is, is like, it's one of the best tools on a multi-tool there is. Um, it, has a, uh, it has a chisel edge, it has a package opener right here, um, and then it's got, uh, you know, some um, wire strippers and, uh, uh, and, and they're, they're, they're really nice and sharpened. So it's sort of like a combo tool uh, and it's really useful. So, you know, this, I would have liked, I'd like to see it Leatherman add, uh, add some of these things. Now I carry Leathermans, like I said, uh, over slip joints most of the time. Um, I do carry the, uh, the Swiss Army knives uh, from time to time, not a ton, um, but uh, I have found myself carrying this because it's so light. It just, it like slides in the pocket, you know? I mean, there is a significant difference. You know, there's, um, there's so even, even this one, right? Even the Cadet. Um, the cadet is, I mean, the cadet's pretty light, but it's only, it's also only, you know, look at the difference in thickness here, right? Um, so you're getting a much more substantial product and, you know, I can't necessarily tell the difference in weight here, right? Um, so that's a huge compliment to what Ask Knife is doing in this. Um, so this is not going to be for everyone, right? You're going to get the people who want that thin, slim profile um, in your uh, in, in your knives, and they'd rather have that flat grind um, in the uh, in the knife. This is not for everyone. Um, and I'll do some size comparisons in a minute, but I'm going to do before I do the size comparisons, I'll sort of give you my conclusion here. Um, so the uh, here you go. See, so. Um, and then you get, well, let me pull out this knife so you can get, see the size comparisons while I talk about it. So the Medford or the Ask knife is going to be, you know, sort of a, it's, it's almost like a full size uh, slip joint here, right? Um, because it's much bigger, or it's, it's bigger than the Pioneer X and it's much bigger than the Cadet um, as far as the, uh, as the blade length and also, you know, the blade, the blade height, right? Now, you need, you need that blade height because you have a hollow grind and a th pretty thick blade, but you know, it's pretty nice uh, to have that extra, um, uh, that extra blade. And then you have things like a large, larger multi-tool, right? So look at the difference in the blades, right? Um, here's a Leatherman Wave. Whoops, that's the uh, serrated blade, wrong side. There we go, Leatherman Wave. So you can see on the wave, you're getting about the same uh, edge length. However, the wave, I mean, look at the significant size difference, right? In the, in the, the carry profile. And, you know, so now you're getting many more tools on the wave, but it's also a lot heavier, a lot heavier, um, because this is a lot of steel. And again, you got titanium injection molding and, uh, and, and just a tiny bit of the steel on the tools. Okay, um, so conclusion on this is that uh, is that initially I was disappointed, um, but this really grew on me, and uh, I've I've kind of grown to love this. Um, I still wish there were some micarta scales or. Uh, you know, even carbon fiber, I, w I would like, but um, I'm, not, I'm not even a huge carbon fiber fan. Um, I just don't like the injection molding. And, uh, you know, if he wants to do aluminum uh, scales, because Medford does work with aluminum. So if they're able to do aluminum scales, as long as they're textured aluminum, I'm, I'm, I'm game. Even the chalky textured aluminum is great, even if it's not, you know, uh, 
uh, actually has you know uh, stippling or anything. Um, so, all right, so that's that. Uh, so I, I, as far as do I recommend the knife? Yes, I do recommend the knife. It is a, uh, a, a recommend, but um, you know it's a two hundred fifty dollars slip joint, right? If you're a guy that likes to fidget with knives um, and you don't enjoy a slip joint, maybe it's not for you. Uh, if you don't already carry a sack, maybe it's not for you. Um, you know, if you don't, um, uh, if you, if you don't carry a sack. You know, because maybe you wanted a little bit more tooling, or you know, you, these have too many tools. Um, you know, and, and you prefer to have something where it's you know just two layers, but you want something more substantial. Yeah, then this is for you. Um, so again, this is it's sort of like it's not for everyone, um, but uh, you know, there, there's a certain segment that this serves. Um, it's going to serve a, a high quality. Um, you know, someone who enjoys a slip joint and, you know, and really needs the blade steel because they're going to be using their slip joint uh, for a significant amount of time um, and they don't necessarily have to sharpen it all the time, right? So, uh, and, and then in general, you know, just, just your collector. Um, one of the reasons I got it is I, I actually have quite a few Medfords, so, um, and I was very curious what he was going to do on a... Um, on a slip joint. All right, size comparisons. Um, Hogdeca, Benchmade Bug Out. Benchmade Mini Griptilian. Again, you can see the, the blade length here. Um, and the, whoops, wrong one. Full size grip. Okay, um, and then you've got the Spyderco Pair 3. Again, here's your blade length, cutting edge. And Pair 2, Pair Military 2. Uh, and then just for kicks and giggles, here's your um, Skeletool. Otherman Skeletool. Something to pay attention to is the Skeletool has a shorter blade than the Wave. And then your uh, Leatherman Charge, which uh, should be about the same size as the Wave on the blade. All right. Um, this has been a long video, uh, but I hope it's been helpful for you guys. Uh, it's sort of a new segment of the market, so I figured it was worth the long video. Uh, and I really appreciate you guys watching this far. Um, if you guys have any questions, drop them below. I'm happy to answer them. Um, don't forget to drop uh, in the morning. Go ahead and uh, hit that affiliate link. Um, definitely help out the channel uh, if you're going to be purchasing. And um, again, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, by the way, uh, for you international guys, DLT does do international shipping. Um, I'm not sure if they do every country. They probably have, have, are limited on, on, to some extent, what they can do. Um, but they, they do do international shipping, and they're known for being one of the better knife dealers for doing international shipping. So, um, uh, so in case you're... And the reason I'm mentioning that specifically is, um, you know, I know the slip joint market is a pretty big market worldwide. So... Uh, Thank you guys for watching again. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell, and uh, I will see you guys next time. Um, and thank you again to my uh, Patreon supporters. Have a great one.